Welcome back. Now, I have not shown you one thing. In the last video, we have invited uh, the supplier. Now, let me check. Yes, it shows that invitation has been sent to the supplier through this email ID. Now, in this video, we are going to see how to register supplier. Click register supplier. You can use this also through supplier user management. I am an administrator. You can use the user management as well. There are a couple of ways to do the registration. We have sent an invitation in the last video. You don't need to send an invitation. This option is if you have in your portal, company's portal, you can give the link and you can send an email to supplier saying that you have been selected to so and so. Please come to give the navigation with the screenshot so that user supplier can come to your portal and click the link and they can register. So that is also possible. If they click the link, it will come to this place. Now the other way is you can send the invite as we have seen in the last video or if you have all the information, you can register supplier for accessing iSupplier portal. Now we are going to select the supplier. This is a supplier. We have sent an invitation, the email ID, test at 3 pm test.com and the username default email id will default and enter the first name it's a contact details there's another way you can do this through supplier the way we configure the normal supplier from the same place from the supplier creation we can create supplier user as well okay there's the user and you can enter the note if you want any note you can enter the note and uh, this one, there are so many responsibilities. We want to give the responsibility. What responsibility we can give? The one thing we need to know that the responsibility what appears here, wherever the profile option POS, the external responsibility flag to yes, only those responsibility will be appearing here because we have to uh, specifically say that it is for an external responsibility. So we have to enable that flag. So let me give yes, yes I supplier portal should be there. Yes, SS I supplier portal. Because we want to use everything, our own responsibilities, our own configuration, that's the reason. Otherwise, you can enable I supplier portal access when you are going to practice after this video, you can do that. And what is this? Site and uh, contact access. You can click the site and you can specify if there are multiple sites. You can specify one or two sites. It means if you select any sites, then the supplier can access only on those sites. Similarly, if you add any contacts, it will work only for those contacts. If you don't mention anything, and the supplier can access all the sites and contact details. There is no restrictions at all. And if you click the registration, click register. If you click the registration, what will happen? If I got a message saying that it's successfully registered for so and so person, the contact. So this is the contact register username has been created. What you do is you just go to sysadmin. Let me close this window. Go to sysadmin. If you go to sysadmin, system user will be created automatically here because I have not set any approval. Query the supply user created. So now we have got a user and the contact name is there and email ID whatever we are given and this user will have default security attributes. There will be a two attributes will be allocated. One is a procurement, another is a supplier or guiding and this has been assigned automatically when we are creating a user supplier and default direct responsibility as we have selected. So this supplier when they are going to log in the first time it will system will ask them to change the password. After they change the password, they can go on access this responsibility to view as we have said. They can view, they can uh, you know, purchase order, invoices, payment information, all the critical delivery information. They can 
refuse to accept the purchase order they can do all that thanks for watching this